So, moving on to this topic. This is courtesy of Ellen Allen, the legendary DJ, right? Legendary DJ and just somebody that I feel like comes across really well. Even though most of these people, like I said, these DJs sometimes, you know, they come across well, then you meet them in real life and they end up being cunts. I still have the feeling that Ellen Allen is a lovely, lovely person just because of how long she's been in the scene. She, you know, she's, her age is non, is non, what do you call it? Um, her age is unspecified. She could be 40. She could be 50. She could be 60. She could be 35. You don't know, actually. But she's effervescent. She has that youthful spirit about her, right? She's bubbling on the inside, looking bright, looking sunny, loving life. Look at all the pictures here. Smiling, loving, smiling, loving, having fun, smiling, loving, with friends, having a good time. And I think a lot of that comes from her kind of outlook on sort of like dance music and stuff and constantly kind of surrounding herself with younger people and tapping into what's going on at the moment and also being open to change and evolving as an artist and blah de blah 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 but one of the sick things that she does are these parties called we are not alone there's one coming up actually i think it's like a 52 54 hour one happening at the end of april so if you're in berlin and you want to check that out i definitely recommend to go and check it out especially because it's going to be at rso um one of my favorite clubs out there in berlin which is the new uh grease muller and it's going to be you know in, in, in the same day um if you want to go and check that out i really do recommend you go and check it and again a whole list of really cool up and coming and established young djs playing alongside her uh, for flipping what is it 54 hour event from april 29th all the way until the first of may ridiculous and amazing anyway that's not what i to talk about what i didn't talk about was that interview with the amazing playful magazine which i think is the magazine that's now replaced resident advisor in terms of featuring and interviewing loads of amazing people in the dance music space for every reason ra even though I, I was brought up on ra a lot of the ra articles especially the event reviews are the reasons why i got this wanderlust or this you know exploration bug this whole techno tourism thing to go and check out all these amazing places and clubs all around the world and connect with different people and follow these artists and blah 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 it came from ra but over time ra kind of fell off you know and maybe a lot of it had to do with the fact that they took away the comments and stuff and started to become a little bit of a place where it started to become like a funneling and a platform for like brand deals and all this sort of malarkey and it kind of got a bit shit kind of got a bit sanitized kind of got a bit gen generic and now it's essentially just a aggregator of like dance music news that i kind of keep up with but in terms of really pushing culture and informing people on what's bubbling and what's coming next up it's not the one electronic beats was for a little bit that's why they jacked the editor and i think editor in chief electronic beats and now that person is at ra but i still haven't seen necessary changes playful mag steps in i think it's berlin based but essentially it's very very niche very core it kind of focuses on dance music with a very specific you know um target towards techno it features loads of stuff about you know the whole sex world and kink world stuff if you're interested in that it focuses a lot of flipping djs the artists the producers the people kind of you know aside from it as well and their interviews i feel like are really good because they're giving opportunities to some of these artists you don't get to see interviewed on many platforms to go interview there because a lot of the bigger people are kind of based in berlin or they pass through there ellen allen sat down to play for mag and she had some pretty cool things to say and um they clipped up a couple of the clips here on the instagram and i'm going to play for a few of them and i'm going to comment in a couple because some of the comments are hilarious like like honestly like dance music fans are legitimately some of the most like redacted fan bases i've seen in my entire life like and redacted if you know you know but this is play this is ellen allen talking to playful mag um just about a whole bevy of topics so this is the first clip that they uploaded i prefer berlin now than back in the days because back in the days what everybody thinks like all oh, this techno community was so um, there was also a sellout more than now with the love rate and mayday and low spirit chart music yeah happy core in, in, in the charts so um or trance music in the charts in the german dance charts yeah. and so for me now um, how the club design um, has a standard now it's on a such a high level of clapping uh It's uh, just congratulations all promoters, club owners, uh, yeah. 
And I think she's right. She's essentially saying the standard of clubbing now is way higher than it was in the past. Maybe everything was localized beforehand when everyone used to say Berlin was the best or that area was the best. Maybe it was a little bit more localized in terms of where the best talent was, where the best parties are. But now because of the internet, now because of low cost, you know, European travel and whatnot, everything's kind of been somewhat commodified in a weird way. Some of it's basically been flattened and the things that you basically would see in all these kind of far-flung places are now you can see in kind of home turf even for myself i've noticed in the last five to ten years it's become harder and harder to justify going on trips weekend trips to berlin to go and party and stuff because for the most part every dj that's bubbling over there who's got a bit of a name around themselves who's got a pretty decent party going on in one way shape or form they're going to come over to london especially in the uk especially to london they all so there's really no um need to go all the way out there to go and party when some of the best parties in Europe or you know in the world take place here in London also so that also makes it um a somewhat of a kind of great thing to do so now if you want to go and travel you're kind of traveling just because you want to do it you're not doing it because you can't hear that particular sound here especially when you kind of include you know live streaming and stuff involved in it as well so I really do agree with what she said here next clip in Berlin's a lot of space still yeah. You don't have to, people moving to Berlin saying always to me, oh, the rent is so expensive. I said, you know what? You don't have to live in the middle of Berlin. If you want to move to Berlin, you have to be apart from Berlin. You have to build something also in Berlin. So go in, in another, uh, uh, um, maybe a bit outside of the center and build something for the city. Make it more beautiful in this area. Mm. You know, you can't think you live in the center where everything is, restaurants, everything is settled. That the rent is low. It's not possible in a big city. I mean, this is a dream. Around Berlin. So she made a pretty, I thought, sensible comment about people who want to move to Berlin now or any kind of major metropolitan city. And, you know, where the, there's a kind of nice youthful scene bubbling up and people are complaining about the high rents and whatnot and the gentrification. She made a pretty good point. If you're coming here chasing a dream, maybe come here and try and live on the outskirts you don't have to live in Neuklund you don't have to live in Kreuzberg right you can kind of live on the outskirts a little bit and maybe you could find some spots there that you could live at where you could also cultivate a scene because the more of you that move out to these sort of like outskirts bits outside of the main city you may then create your own little community and then that community might be like hey we don't want to keep traveling inwards to go and party let's create our own thing here on the outskirts and sometimes because you're so out from the city and there's nothing around there you may be able to get away with far more and you maybe have been people there that can kind of you can build with who are kind of the same stage that you are it's just a good way to kind of get about doing things but it makes a lot of sense especially with me i've seen it here in london where the most part it's the same sort of thing um most of the places kind of outside of the main city center are where the far more interesting things are happening but it's just harder to come and back forth with um i've noticed with myself when i went to berlin for my weekend trips i've kind of got into a habit of always kind of staying around the neuklon area when now really the last couple of times i've kind of ventured out it's not really that far but technically to people that go and travel there for the weekend staying in places like wedding is a bit far but it's nice to kind of go somewhere different and kind of new and fresh and see different surroundings and that's me going there for a weekend i think if you're there moving there as a young person you probably owe it to yourself to try and really kind of push it test yourself and throw yourself into the deep end and live somewhere that isn't in the heart of the city and try and make that work try and make that figure that stuff out and even just figuring out how to get transport to go into the center to go to your job that's all part of learning how to kind of you know um blend into the city get settled find friends all those things happen during those commutes and coming back late from home one time all those things happen at the same sort of time anyway very sensible kind of common sense approach right you would think the comments are hilarious right she said that made that comment hey maybe don't think about being staying in the same place right um let's see the comment here right that people are getting annoyed by this is absolutely amazing to see somebody making such a good sensible common sense point like that and then this person got annoyed and thought that basically Ellen Allian was being rude or something, right? So um, this is it, right? This account. It's called Berliners Mad at Tenants. Or no, Ber Ber Berliners Mad at Rents. So it basically makes sense why they're mad. They said this in reply to what Ellen Allian said. Dear Ellen, who is supposed to work in restaurants? The supermarkets. Who is supposed to work in the BSR cleaning? 
cleaning our public toilets are these people also supposed to live outside and travel three hours a day to work for a city only the rich can afford how are clubs supposed to survive with raising rents as a born and raised berliner not able to afford her district anymore and long fan of yours i'm disappointed i have a community and i built something but i cannot afford the rental market anymore wouldn't have expected this take by you since you're probably not looking for a flat why don't you take a look at my account to see the reality for people nowadays like what the fuck are you talking about what does ellen alien have to do with fucking affordable rent raise rent prices or whatever it may be in berlin or the housing issue what can she do for that what does she, what part does she have to play in that in the slightest that is an issue you have to raise up with your local council, with your government, with your local officials, whatever it may be, right? But that's not an issue that you'd lay at the feet at a single DJ. This is a widespread gentrification issue that's super, you know, complicated and hard to kind of pass through. But to point that blame at the feet of a DJ is fucking insane, especially when they're asked, hey, if you're a young person in Berlin, uh, struggling with rent, what should you do? And she's like, hey, as an offer, if you, as a young person, you're coming up as an artist, my advice would be move somewhere a little bit outside of the city with cheaper rent so you have more money to spend on your art, to get creative, to maybe build a community in that smaller place that you're in, blah, 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 whatever. That's some pretty decent kind of wise advice from somebody that's kind of been there, done that. That makes a lot of sense. And then maybe as well, think about it as a kind of achievement. It's pretty cool to be like, hey, I used to live in this shitty part of Berlin. It was run down. It was far out. It was around like a countryside where people only have, you know, or anybody there only has children or whatever it may be. And then I got enough money and I got become successful enough where I was able to kind of move a bit more inward and live in the area that I actually wanted to live into. That's something comes quite nice to kind of aim for. But to kind of pin the blame on the flipping housing crisis over there in Berlin at a DJ's feet is legitimately insane. And it just speaks to how warped some of these dance music fans are, where they legitimately think like techno or dance music or club culture is some sort of political movement. It's bizarre per to me personally. They really do think they have, it has a lot more kind of influence and sway into like wider issues than it does. It really doesn't, especially outside of Berlin or Germany. Outside of Berlin or Germany, especially London being a good example, the gentrification machine is rampant. Whenever there's an area bubbling up, right, with young people, creative people in a really desolate part of town, there's a cool little scene behind it, people are there, they're flooding it, they're adding to the vibe, just know it's a countdown to it getting gentrified. Doesn't matter how much you protest, how much you shout and scream, they're going to build a fucking horrible glass and steel skyscraper, you know, half workspace, half flipping apartment building there. Sooner rather than later. It happens all the time. The gentrification machine just keeps rolling on and you just have to go and find another place to go and stay that's a bit cheaper and, it, and then that gets gentrified and you keep going again and you keep going again. That machine keeps rolling. But Berlin is a bit different. Sometimes, you know, petitions work, protests work. Sometimes they will put a pause on the building and say you can stay there for a little bit of time. Sometimes you can reach a middle ground. Things happen, right? There, there is some sort of negotiation here. Here in London, especially if there's a bad accident, if somebody gets injured outside of a club, inside of a club, an overdose or whatever, license removed, police shut down the place. It's pretty peak outside of the Berlin bubble. That's a bubble that people live in outside of that berlin bubble in most places clubs aren't political spaces they're not platforms for wider societal change they're just revenue makers for local flipping constituents that's all they are tax havens for some people let's not get into that part of it but these people put way too much onus on their words on what this music means to the grand scheme of things it's legitimately insane like legitimately insane in my opinion, to get that from what she said. But anyway, continue. More comments from Ellen Elian. I mean, it was after Corona. I, I played at Third Room in Essen, a uh, warehouse. It was really dark. And on the way to the DJ booth, there was something in the, on the way, uh, something holding the lights, and I fell over. And oh. it was not with lightning. I didn't see it. Um, and to hold myself, I had to jump on my knee, not to fall with my head on the monitoring. <laughs> so I was in front of Fels Fatal, like this, like, like, like a kefer, 
like an insect <laughs> falling on the back. Ellen, you have to play it, so time. I'm lying on the floor. I said, no, I can't scream. No, I mean, it was after Corona. I, I played at third room. I'm screaming, ambulance, <laughs> because I, oh I put I put my my um, trousers up, looking on my knee. I couldn't move it on because it was hurting like antlers. Looking, and there was one bone here and one bone there. <laughs> I said, okay, I broke something. So I'm. I wonder what she was on because we we they don't tell it in this interview, but if you are walking back to your flipping DJ booth on the way to play, Face Fate Tower is on there slaying. You're next up, and you trip over something that you thought was a light, but it was as was a cable. What were you on? Please tell me, and don't say it was water because I don't believe you. But tell me what it was on that you mistaked a cable for a light or a light for a cable. Please, someone tell me what you think she was on at that time to think that and then to what did she say it sounded like she said she went to break her fall on her knee instead of falling on the back of her head which is a weird option to take right you'd rather break your leg than hit your head i guess that makes sense right you'd rather have a broken leg than you know suffer some sort of brain injury right um that makes some sort of sense but i think there's some parts of the story that she's purposely leaving out there so big up to the legend and the last clip here do you have any Fears for the scene? Fears? No. Yeah. No. Okay. I think uh, important is when you feel fear, maybe you're not active enough. Mm. Yeah, when I feel fear, um, this is, means you don't move on. Yeah, and if you want, if you fear, I think you need to do something to help the scene or to be in the, your community and build something up. Mm. Yeah, and as long as we have communities, uh, we uh, we run our parties by ourselves anyways. And I agree with her. I think that's the something that I've kind of been wrestling with myself because it's clear as day, as much as we like to hate on it and we don't want it, but that whole TikTok raver scene, that music they're into, whether it's flipping, um, what's his face? Whether it's uh, SPF DJs, um, whether it's uh, LSD XOXO, whether it's a Nini H, all these people that a lot of the kind of like chin strokers and a lot of the Berlin fans or Berkheim fans who I'm probably a lot closer to than the TikTok ravers, a lot of those guys and girls don't like that scene of people and think it's too cheesy and too top top 40s now music type of vibe. The What we can see with our own eyes is that that stuff is becoming popular, way more popular than what we'd want it to be. And it's clearly introducing a whole new group of people into the club scene, whole new generation of people into the club scene, and it's changing the sound of what is being played in clubs. And there is a point where you kind of have to like just accept that that's going to be a part of the scene and maybe find your little pocket that you can exist in or try and find stuff within that genre that you do like. But resisting it and being kind of obstinate against it and just being really defensive and kind of criticizing just because of what it is and because it's new isn't the greatest way to go about things in general. Because those guys and girls are going to be here longer than what we are because they're obviously younger. So there has to be some sort of changing of the guard. And I also think like if you have a little bit of a self-important vibe about you, it maybe is important to also be somebody that can be a point of um, contact. Maybe you can kind of instill some of your edu your learnings and educations to the younger generation by somewhat being open to what they like and what they listen to. Maybe. Probably not true. Probably not open. Probably not of an option, whatever. But that maybe is something that people could explore. But I'm definitely um, trying to open my eyes and ears to that sort of stuff and be like, okay, cool. Let me find stuff that I like, that I'm open to, that I want to listen to. Because there was a point where I was considering going to Possessions Festival that they were going to do in Paris. But I think it, it ended up happening. But you know, Possession ended up kind of falling off the face of the earth. And they haven't really been updating their stuff since 2022. But that whole sound, I was trying to get into it. But I went to a couple of parties, never really liked it. There are some guys I like, to, I like in the scene that do really well, good stuff in there. And um, you just need to find the things that you like in it that kind of make sense because most likely, especially the clubs here in London, there's always a type of event that kind of falls within that range. I'm seeing more and more trance every single week when I look on RA. I'm seeing way more 
um, trancey type of DJs and that kind of sound. So clearly it's something that's becoming more and more popular over time and you just have to kind of get with it, innit? You kind of have to get with it. If you don't get with it, um, it's going to roll you over. Unfortunately, 